This video is going to focus on a new cycleway that's been installed not far from where I live in Sydney. The cycleway is called the Barara Cycleway Project. There's been a call for feedback if you see any negative experiences going on along this new cycleway. Because I'm a video person, I'm able to capture some very interesting activity which seems to make this section of road a fair bit more dangerous versus what it was like prior to the cycleway being installed. I do have some historical footage of what the road used to be like before the cycleway was installed. I'll also show you some glaring inconsistencies that have been going on along this road as well in relation to cycleways. I'll take a look at a Facebook post that I deemed as fake news after doing a very simple inspection. And the main focus of this video is taking a look at drivers who are turning left off the Pacific Highway from the middle lane. I call them duck dive turns. And normally with road rules, if you're turning left, you go to the left hand lane to make a left hand turn. You go to the right hand lane to make a right hand turn. Yes, there are exceptions to those rules. But from what I can see with the installation of the cycleway, there's a lot of confusion and delay with people making left hand turns from the Pacific Highway going into streets that go into the suburb of Barara. One constant that I'm seeing is cars doing that hard left turn from the middle lane. Of course, they're braking in the middle lane. It's upsetting any vehicles that are behind them. And sooner or later, someone's going to go straight up the backside, or we say up the ass, of the car in front because they're going to get caught out because the car in front's braked heavily to turn left. There is a section there on the roads with a broken line in that green zone around the intersections where you can drift into the bike lane and it's only along those broken line areas that you can do that where you could make a safer left turn but I think a lot of people totally misunderstand what the broken lines are for they seem to understand what the southern line means that means do not drive into the cycleway do not drift into the cycleway and the green area is also another area of confusion I did some reading up online and the green area is an area where cyclists and vehicles may intersect. In a sense, it's the most dangerous aspect to these cycleways. And what I've noticed in my very small study of this cycleway, when I take a look at that green area, I can see a lot of tire marks that come from the middle lane. They cut across that green section and it indicates to me people doing very late left-hand turns from the middle lane. The tires are talking to me there. The marks on the road show me that cars are doing what I call those duck dive turns from the middle lane. Really dangerous to do, especially if there's a cyclist there. The cyclist is just going to get completely smashed over if someone's making that very late turn in that rush from the middle lane. When I did my video study here, the cycleway had been installed for a number of weeks, but it's during the quiet time of January when the school holidays was on. I'd hate to think of the chaos that's going to evolve once we get back to normal working week and everyone goes into manic mode. Okay, we've got our head around the turning left from the middle lane syndrome and I've showed you a problem. Maybe a solution would be to extend the broken white line so there's more opportunity to turn left. Maybe putting a left turn arrow within the bike lane is going to assist drivers in understanding where they should be when they're turning left. But remember, people with far higher IQs than me who've got university degrees have devised what we see at the moment. And I'm hoping I'm showing you that what's there at the moment is dangerous. And maybe better said, more dangerous than what was there before. And because I'm magical, I can turn back time and show you what the road used to be like when we had three lanes without a dedicated bike lane. And you can see how I make a left-hand turn. I'm in the left-hand lane and I'm not interrupting with the other two lanes of traffic that would be passing me by as I'm turning left off the Pacific Highway. My goodness me, back in simpler times, back when making a left-hand turn was a far simpler and safer affair. Because of the dedicated bike lane, the signage along the Pacific Highway here has changed. There's a bus stop area, which is just outside the 7-Eleven service station. There's basically no stopping or no parking signs along the Pacific Highway here. Now, trucks love to stop at the 7-Eleven. I've already seen trucks stopping there in the bike lane. I'm not going to even touch the topic of is that right or wrong. Uh, I don't understand where trucks can and can't stop. But again, before trucks could easily stop there in that third lane, it seems like now things have changed. 
And thinking back to the signage, all I see is no parking or no stopping, or there's one area there which is a bus zone, and there's nothing much else. It's almost like you can't stop at all in that bike lane. Okay, now to look at the absolute inconsistencies of the way bicycle lanes are applied to the Pacific Highway. If I go 10 kilometres south from Barara, we are in Asquith. There's a new development there of townhouses. There was a lot of reworking done to the nature strip and also the curb. In fact, the curb on the road there is brand spanking new. The cement may still be wet. Now, can we see a cycleway or a bicycle lane put in that area there? There's plenty of opportunity, but there's absolutely nothing. It's a complete pinch point if you're on a bicycle. In fact, it's a death trap. I have to ask myself, and I'm sure lots of people in Asquith have asked the same, why did they totally neglect the cyclists when they did that new curb? There's plenty of room there to have stripped in an area for the cyclists to ride safely. So there's nothing there for cyclists. Along the highway as you travel north from Asquith to Barara, what you're served as a cycling area can sometimes be nothing. Sometimes there's a very, very small area there which has got little printed bikes onto the road that tells you it's a bike area but for some reason in Barara the cyclists are given a whole lane and it was a lane that was used by local residents it was a lane that assisted local businesses it was a lane that made turning left safe in the suburb and maybe the most confounding thing about this change is it doesn't marry up with anything else that you see if you're coming up from Hornsby up to Barara it's like this anomaly in Barara where the cyclists are given a whole lane to play on their bikes. Maybe it's been done to see if the local people in Barara will snap. I mean, the strangest things happen these days and a lot of people see this dedicated bike lane as being very strange. Now to something that was said on the local Facebook page. Looks like the admins posted this and it talks about a report of thumbtacks being strewn over the new controversial bike lane. I was sent this post immediately and in fact I went straight up to the bike lane to find some evidence of this. The post on Facebook had no pictures. I wanted to get the dirt. I walked the whole bike lane, guess what I found? I found a cut padlock and I also found some hardware that was used to erect those no stopping, no parking signs. I thought that Facebook post was a bit suspect because there was no picture attached to it. I know we all like to make a point, we all like to do a bit of attention seeking, but when I see a post that claims something without a picture, I'm highly suspicious because we all carry phones with us which all have cameras attached to them these days. Just as I was finishing this video, I was getting messages from friends in Barawa who come home in the peak hour traffic now, everyone's gone back to work. There's another problem developing at the left hand turn off the Pacific Highway into Barawa Waters Road. I was able to get one piece of dash cam to tack onto this video to show you the problem here where you have drivers going into the bike lane before that broken white line. Other drivers are playing by the rules and they're getting caught out because they're up against all of the other vehicles that are already jumped into the bike lane to make the left hand turn onto Barrow Waters Road. The only option for people who are not being let in to turn left, they have to go straight through the traffic lights and basically loop around via the RSL to end up going home. So in seeing this, it just stacks onto the other problems that I've showed you in this video. Let's finish off in a positive way of showing you two cyclists riding side by side in the new cycleway on Barara. As a motorist in a vehicle, if I'm going to pass these cyclists legally, by law I need to give them a minimum of one metre passing clearance in a 60 kilometre an hour zone. Even though these cyclists have been given a whole lane, I still need to drift to the right, go into the outside lane to legally pass the cyclist and giving them the minimum one meter clearance so I don't get fined. And this isn't a piece of setup video from friends of mine on bikes. This is for real. This is one of the first things that I captured when I started to take more notice of this cycleway. And in seeing this activity by the cyclists, it gets back to that saying, you give some people an inch and they'll want to take a mile. Maybe the best aspect to this video is it gets seen by people all around the world. Maybe some viewers will suggest some ideas in how to make it safer. Or maybe some viewers will say, hey, what's been done there is perfect. It's just a case of drivers learning how to interact with that bike lane, which has taken one third of the road. And if you are going to comment, please try to be constructive and relate back to things that I showed in the video. And if I'm seeing it's all wrong, please let me know.
looking at roads and cyclists and changes in road design. It's a very dry subject. I just hope I've been able to make this interesting to look at. And if you did watch the video, I'm certainly thanking you for your time.